Alright guys, so I know it's a little bit early, about a day early from when I told you guys I was originally going to answer these questions, but I think I've pretty much maxed out how many questions I'm going to get. I'm pretty much convinced that I'm at that that level where I'm probably not going to get many more. Um, so I'm going to answer all these questions from top to bottom. Uh, first user asks... Uh, by the name of Clark Neal asks, okay, I watched some of your trip reports and have learned a thing or two. What common herb would you take for energy? I've used ginseng before, and it's okay, but too expensive. Ginseng is incredibly expensive, you are right. And you are a rich man if you find it in the wild. As far as things I've personally used are concerned, the only things I can really recommend are like mugwort um, and mugwort and yerba mate. If you're an inexperienced user of nicotine, you could use tobacco. It acts more of a stimulant, and a lot of the uh, people who aren't addicted it acts more as a relaxing agent for people like me who have a horrible addiction. Um, I can't speak uh, personally or from personal experience about this because, of course, I live in a prohibition state when it comes to the substance, but I have read a lot of reports uh, from people that have tried Kratom, and the general consensus seems to be that it gives you some type of drive to get shit done. Uh, I've also, from my research, found that a lot of there's a lot of different strains of Kratom out there, and a lot of them promote more of an energetic feeling, while some are more of a sedative opiate type feeling. Um, and I can't say this, I can speak f uh, fr from personal experience with this, but it's not really a, a stimulant per se. This would, this just, it just makes things more bearable. Like say you're at work, it's a slow day and you're just cleaning. Um, this would make menial, boring tasks a little bit more bearable. I, I would say California poppy, honestly. Uh, if you've had a fair bit of background in using it before, you could probably go into anywhere um, and be completely fine. And it can be the most mind-numbing, boring tasks uh, you've done in your life. But it's still... Um, it's still bearable under the influence, I guess. <sighs> S-Man Speaks. Uh, actually, I would recommend this guy. He is a, a very articulate young man and great with video production and so on. Uh, first question asked is, how do you make these videos? Well, it really depends on what era we're talking about in this channel. Um, I've only done one video and it's actually my first video on this account. Um, I've only done one video with the YouTube camera capture little application. I don't even know if they use that anymore. Um, but that is how I made videos. The first video, I mean. That's how I made the first video. After that, I learned that I could just record stuff on Windows Movie Maker, take that raw video clip, and put it on YouTube. Uh... Then I got the Logitech webcam. I was still doing the Windows Movie Maker method, but from about spring 2016 to until I got the new PC, basically, I uh, was using the Logitech webcam software but then I tried using it on this new computer. I don't know if it's something with Windows 10 or what, but the software just won't work. It'll freeze up immediately and just uh, close itself out. So at the moment, since I'm a little too cheap and a little too hesitant to buy any web or video recording software and video editing software, um, I'm not really using anything right now aside from the built-in Windows 10 camera application and I just upload the, the file, or the capture file onto YouTube. Um, I'm probably going to look into Sony Vegas pretty soon though, 
just from production quality. Uh, what are your thoughts on capitalism? Oh boy. Oh Jesus. So I used to be a big capitalism fanatic. I used to call myself a libertarian. Uh, I'm not like a socialist or anything right right now or anything, but I do think that the market does need some government oversight. I do think that uh, I do think that if it's unfettered capitalism, the middle class basically it would vanish and it'd just be a bunch of rich barons and a bunch of poor people. Uh, who am I kidding? The middle class is just basically poor people trying to prove they aren't poor. But, um... Either way, uh, I do think capitalism brings out a lot of competition. I think it, uh, people decide what the optimal product is, and they consume it. The others are left to waste, but that comes to the downside. I do think it can be quite wasteful at some points. Uh, say a, a product is a complete flop, well now you're left with all this uh, manufactured bullshit that you really can't uh, sell because nobody wants it. Same thing goes for the... Um, automotive industry. There's a lot of cars out there that never really sell too well. Uh, and they're just left there untouched in lots just far away and you know they could probably make a decent profit selling this at a lower rate but they don't want to so they just kind of sit there and rot uh so yeah that's kind of my long exaggerated thoughts on capitalism sorry if you're hearing a piano upstairs i think someone's playing a piano upstairs um how has 2017 been for you? Uh, 2017, I honestly thought it was going to be a shitty, shitty, depressing year, but it's honestly been one of the best years of my life. I'm not going to lie. Um, let's see, like, I've met a lot of cool people. I've learned to let things go. My mental health has improved almost at a 180. Um, I just... I'm experiencing a lot of things. I'm going out and doing stuff. Experiencing a lot of things. Meeting a lot of people I never thought I'd meet. Thought I would just kind of be in my room, locked up, like how I usually was back in the day. But now, um, you know, everything's so, so much better. So much more peaceful. I just don't freak out as much as I used to. Uh, so that 2017 has been pretty good for me. I still have stuff to look forward to, like uh, my 21st birthday. I might take a trip out to California shortly thereafter um, to visit my aunt. And, yeah. And if that's the case, I am going to smoke a lot of weed in California, and I'll do a live stream. Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 2017 has been pretty good for me. I hope it's been good for you. Um, next person, Lithian, asks a few questions. If you could raise 50000 for a charity of your choice, would you go to work slash out in public dressed in drag? Uh, of my choice, let me tell you the choice. I think it would be some non-profit organization uh, committed to finding a cure for breast cancer. And I would go to work or out in public dressed in drag for a week uh, so that other people will not, ha will not have to suffer such a painful death my grandmother did. Um, his second question is, what's your greatest fear? Is there anything that you can imagine being presented with that would paralyze you? <sighs> my biggest fear, well, one of my fears is are, are cops they just they just scare me um i don't really do a lot of bad shit they just freak me the fuck out uh, i i think my biggest fear would be like having a friend die or having like a parent die or something like that like people dying around me that i'm close to because, like, if 
a best friend died, like, I don't know how I would react to that. Um, only other thing that I can imagine would be scary would be, like, having, like, a horrible, nightmarish trip on something, and it would probably stop me from doing substances. But with that being said, that's, that's why I have kind of made it a point not to or to try to avoid uh, certain chemicals or plants. My, my other fear, I think, is one of my worst. I always think people are talking shit about me. I always think people, like... And I don't mean, like, on YouTube, like, haha, you're gay, you suck penis, like, whatever, like, I don't even fucking know you, but people, like, I respect, or something, I get, like, anxious, I'm like, oh, they must be talking shit about me, I know if I'm not there, they're gonna be fucking on me, um, that's a big fear of mine, I don't know why, it's just, like, if people don't like me, I'd want them to let me know. Are you, or question number three, are you glad you experienced so many trips? Uh, yeah, actually I am. I would, I am. Uh, it, there's a lot of substances that have been more of a tool in realizing myself flaws. There's been some substances that kind of have told me like, hey, this isn't such a big deal, leave it alone. And there's been other substances which have told me like, hey, uh, you know you want to do this, this is how you should do this. I like to look at them as, like, tools for diagnosing problems in your life. Like, the last time I smoked weed, or the first time after smoking weed after waiting so long, I still had a lot of emotionally pent-up energy from things uh, I don't even want to get into, but... Immediately after I sobered up from that, it just did not matter to me after that. They also have another thing. Oh, that's kind of ironic. I just talked about that. Um, are there things you would never do even with supervision? I'm. It's kind of like a follow-up for the last question. Yeah, there are some things I would never do. You will never see a Mjolnir Man DXM trip report. Um, the reason being is that I had a grandfather who is now dead not from dxm but i had a grandfather who like unknowingly became addicted to robitussin and cough syrup he would like talk about how he was hallucinating because he didn't he was he had like walking pneumonia or something i can't re remember exactly what it was but he was drinking it to clear up his uh nose or whatever and stop coughing so much so he could go to bed well, after a while, I guess he kind of built a tolerance to it, started taking, like, psychedelic or, like, uh, psychoactive threshold doses of it. And, and mind you, this was before I was even born. But I guess one night he literally had, like, a nightmarish trip on it. Something triggered in his body, and he was in a coma for one month. Um... He missed his birthday. Uh, he missed... I think he actually missed the announcement that my mother was pregnant with me. But... And seeing all the things that can go wrong with that, like going into seizures, having basically like full brain death, like it just doesn't seem appealing to me. Obviously, you know, you won't see like a cocaine, a crack, a, a heroin, a methamphetamine trip report. Um, but there's probably one substance I don't think I would ever do even with supervision since I've heard so many negative things about it would be something like Jimson weed, uh, any basically batch or a plant. I've read so many horror stories about it. I've seen so many trips gone wrong. Um, it just doesn't seem appealing to me. And it doesn't even really seem like anything anybody should be doing. Um, 
I don't know. I, I don't have much experience with Delirience, but most of the time it, it really hasn't been a great experience. So I think I'll pass up the Datura. Uh, as for something, I know you didn't ask that, but something I wouldn't try again. Uh, well, there's this one weed strain I had a long time ago called Jesus OG, and it sent me into the most psychedelic uh, hell I've ever been to. So I'm never going to do the strain Jesus OG again. But other than that, uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. So definitely not DXM for other reasons. Definitely not Detura because that just seems uh, insanely spooky. 15 minutes, damn. Hold on, before we get to the next question, customary vape. Thomas Janes asks, what is your view on TJ Kirk? Uh, I'm assuming he means the Amazing Atheist. I don't have any problems with the Amazing Atheist. I do think he's kind of immature at points and times, but it's not really my thing to dictate. But I think that kind of comes from him having... It seems like he just has like a kind of more of a showmanship type of deal going on he seems more like an entertainer um so maybe that's where that comes from uh i when i was still like a raving libertarian i was a, fe a video of mine was featured on the drunken peasants podcast i don't remember which one it was i think it was some one of the early ones in the 200s um but i remember like reading like or reading a title from like best of dp or something and i clicked on it and wouldn't you know it was like my fucking fat face on the screen i was like oh shit i've never actually watched the whole thing i just don't even want to know what they say uh because i know that video that was played was like one of my shittiest videos anyways even back then i thought like oh that was a horrible video um but it you know it's it's whatever I guess. Uh, T.J. Kirk, I don't know. I, some days he pisses me off. Other days I agree with him spot on, and some days he's just kind of like meh. Uh, but I do think he can be quite entertaining at some points in time. I do think he's very intelligent. I just don't think a lot of people think he is, because uh, I think it kind of gets lost in the humor. But I do think he's kind of... I, I think he's intelligent. I'll give him that. Um, but is he someone I like watch religiously? Not not really. He's not really my cup of tea, personally. Um, yeah. The infamous Ryby Jenkins asks, Show us your knives. What is your favorite knife? Uh, these are swords, by the way. Uh, I'll show you the swords, but my favorite knife is actually this buck knife. And the reason it is, is it was a gift at a birthday party before my great-grandma passed. I think it was her 90th or 89th great, or great birthday. 80th, or 89th or 90th birthday. Uh, it's a man that all my family tells me to stay away from, but my dad and him have a pretty decent relationship. And he started talking to me because he immediately knew I was, uh, his son. Um, don't really know what he carved into it. It says I'm on the blade. I don't know where that comes from. But it's something I will keep forever. Uh, but yeah, these are just swords. Uh, this is like a 300 replica sword. That's just like a base scimitar. But this is my favorite sword. My my uh, grandpa and my step grandmother, who's you know all intents and purposes a grandmother. I mean, my grandparents split when before I was even born. Like when my dad was probably eight or nine. So you know. Grandpa moved on, had another kid with a, a second woman. Grandma moved on, married another man. 
who has now passed on as well. But my grandpa was cleaning out the old shed that they used to have, and he found this. And this is actually a refurbished uh, Union sword from the Civil War. And the only reason we know that is when these swords would come back from, you know, being used. I just like the, you know, you know, I just like the design on it and stuff, but after they come back from being used, the, the tips would get snapped off. So this is my favorite sword. Now, my grandfather made a rule that it has to skip every generation. So if I'm old and gray and actually had kids that went on to have kids, I would give them that sword. If not, because uh, I don't think I'm going to have kids, I think I'm probably just going to have to give it to like some relative's kid or something. Uh, and what she also asked, how many headshots do you get in Call of Duty? I bet you aren't even good. I'm not really much of a gamer, so yeah, I probably would not be that good in Call of Duty. But when I was playing Battlefield 3 a lot, and Black Ops 2 had just come out, I noticed it was real easy to get first place in a lot of Call of Duty games, because, um, Battlefield 3 seems more tactical, and I think it just teaches you to be more tactical in Call of Duty, because nobody's tactical in Call of Duty. But, no, nah, I never really get headshots in video games. I just go for the chest. I mean, like, why focus on the head when you can get a few rounds in the chest and kill them? Maybe, oh, you'll get more points to get a headshot. Well, fuck it, you know. I'm more of a utilitarian, a pragmatist, if you will. If I kill someone, I kill someone. It doesn't matter where, where I hit them. Um, the last series of questions is from Labraturn. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Some of y'all have some really weird fucking names on here. Um, what is the worst thing that has happened to you? It would either be, uh, getting arrested and going to that hospital after they found that I had taken a bunch of painkillers when I was 15. Uh, probably my suicide attempt would be one of them. Other than that, uh, probably the death of my grandfather or finding out that some someone I held close to me, their actions that led to them being dealt with within a prosecuting type setting uh, led me to not want to be friends with them anymore because of the disgustingness of their actions. What's the sword in the background? That's the next question. I already, I already went through that. Uh, final question. Oh. Um... No, it's not the final question. This person originally asked uh, something about doing nutmeg. I guess they they edited their comment. I remember seeing this question. Uh, no, don't do nutmeg. It's kind of actually a horrible experience. Um, it's just kind of like things slow down and you feel sick for the next three days. Really would not recommend it. Uh, what do I think of Donald Trump? Hmm... I used to vehemently support him, but my views have changed, and I don't really support him anymore. Um, I do think he might be good from a business perspective, but at the same time, he kind of comes off as an airhead. Um, I'm not going to be one of those people that say, oh, he, he's just a fucking racist piece of shit. I don't really know the guy personally, so I can't really fire on him for grounds on that. But uh, I do think he's one of those people that that's lips flap, flap a little too fast, doesn't really have that mechanism to think before they speak. Um... Other than that, I think he probably has some ideas. I think he might be beneficial for medical marijuana, but that just may have been a talking point. 
I think he'll do good and bad. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Because I don't like judging presidents until I've seen a, a decent extensive list of what they've done. So, yeah, that's me answering all your questions. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll get back to this at 600 subscribers. Sound good, okay? Until next time.